What is up, FIFA faithful? Bear Hams here with the 11th installment of my Minnesota United career mode. And before we get into this big game against David Beckham's Inter Miami, let's talk about the thrilling game against Seattle Sounders. Wow, I am so relieved to be so wrong. Similar to last week, I was unaware of the injury problem, but this time it was for the Sounders as seven of them were out on injury. Kudos to the Loons, though, for winning with a gritty performance, but Seattle lost this game more than anything. Rui Diaz, apart from two shots, was non-existent, and it seemed like they couldn't get anything going. From the whistle, things seemed different. The Loons' back four dictated the tempo, suffocating the Seattle offense by keeping possession and killing time. DJ Taylor, I thought, had a showcase performance with several key tackles on counters and started to mesh well with Lud and Reynoso on that right side. The midfield also did well as Will Trapp and Hassani Dotson did well intercepting and prolonging Minnesota's possession. In the past, I have been a critic of Trapp and the former Columbus Crew player has impressed me as of late. And once Ozzy Alonso does leave, I feel like the Loons have their six for the next couple of years. Up top was quiet with some flourishes in the first half, other than Reynoso's near miss on the free kick, they couldn't get anything going. Credit to Adrian Heath though for putting Lud in the false nine and putting Hansen on the wing to stretch Seattle's back five, and finally broke them in the 81st minute. My three stars of the game are DJ Taylor for his performance. Also, a quick shout out to Brent Coleman. He was fantastic along with DeBossi. I know that's two shout outs, but just move on. Also, Will Trapp, as I said before, and Robin Lud for scoring that goal once again. And so I could scream with my friend, Finland! Great win for the Loons as singing Wonderwall against Seattle was supremely satisfying. Again, it wasn't their full team, but the Loons still did great, only having half of their back four with Metnair and Boxel out. Only hope is this form from the backups can continue into Portland and other decent teams in the Western Conference. Once again, we are catching up with games as we'll be playing two in this episode, starting off against Inter Miami away. Then we have a home fixture against Portland, which, I mean, it, it's the game that is coming up this week. So we are going to play it for sure. And we'll have our own prediction at the end of this episode. So two, ah, I wouldn't say two. Miami's doing pretty horseradish right now, even with having Higuain and uh, Matuidi. But nonetheless, play those two teams, hope for the best. Now, I haven't been paying too much attention to any Inter Miami news, but I do know that technically they're playing with four designated players as opposed to three, and they're still in last place. I checked the rankings according to MLS, and they are ranked 27th out of 27th. It is kind of embarrassing considering they have the Rhino and Gonzalo Higuain. They got Matuidi, guys that were a little more than a year ago, a little less than a year ago, we're playing a four Juventus, and they can't do anything with it. I don't know what it is exactly. I don't know what Phil Neville is doing, but uh, yeah, nah, trouble in paradise, to say the least. Clear damn good pass to Morgan. Morgan gets a cross in, headed out by Boxel. Dotson tries to pass it to Lud, but it will stay as Jones. Tries to get another cross, and thankfully that tackle by Dotson didn't work out. Good pass Reynoso. Does see the run by Trapp, who does see Hansen on the wing. Hansen does have some speed to him, and he is going to get through. Levers that through to Unu, but just out of the reach as it is scooped up by McCarthy. Oh, good block there. An opportunity here for Unu as he heads it down. Unu takes it. Makes it two. A fortuitous bounce. Falls straight to our French striker. And just before halftime, he doubles the lead. Great start to the episode. Great start to the half, to the game, whatever. <laughs> two goals by Unu gives us a 2-0 advantage. Interesting. Oh, a turnaround shot by Higuain. Goes for the no-scope but hits the post. A reminder, you can join us for MLS action on EA TV. It's Minnesota United. Oh, wow. What a pass. Threads that right past the defense. What a goal by Pizarro. 
who does not have his long hair. Chance now. Jones does get a cross in. Oh my gosh, what a save by Miller. Has poked away another chance for a shot. Thankfully, it does take a deflection. Wood able to just chest it down and eventually win it. Just launches it up for Unu, who is there. Unu now. All by himself. Still all by himself. Just going to try to kill some valuable time here. Finds Wood. Tries to get that through to Reynoso. Now Metanair. Tries to get it back to Lud. Eventually with a deflection he does. Trap. Curls it and puts it in. Way to end the game with an insurance goal by Will Trap of all people. So he puts it on his left and puts it home. Good end to game one. 3 1 victory against Inter Miami. Let's bring that momentum against Portland. For the starting lineup against Portland, I made it a little more realistic. As you can see, Coleman and Taylor are getting the start as opposed to Boxel and Metinair. I also have Gregush starting. Hopefully, he does start against uh, Portland this weekend. And the first half was a bit insane, uh, particularly with the goalkeeping performance from Steve Clark making saves left, right, and center, especially this long one from Nico Hansen, and even just a couple more at the end of the half. As he was just all over the place, saving, again, just every single shot we put on him. It was at least five or six. But then finally opened up the storm gates as Gregush, able to find Unu, who gets his third goal of the episode. And with that one, we were able to secure the victory, as there was just one chance for Portland, but it just hit the side netting. So once again, a, another victory. We just continue to accrue these three points through the season. Perusing through the table now, as you can see, 15 games, 34 points. The other team with 15 is Real Salt Lake, who only have 17 points. So we're doing at least, you know, good enough where we won't be out of the playoffs. But then again, a lot of these teams do have games in hand. And anything can happen, especially with Seattle Sounders and how talented they have been for the past couple seasons, not to mention Timbers, Sporting KC, and even LAFC with only 10 games. Now on to predictions. Now last week, I was a little blindsided by the amount of injuries Seattle Sounders had. I don't think it's as bad with the Timbers. And because of that, I think it's going to be a closer game as opposed to 1-0. I think this will be a draw. I do think the Loons being at home will have enough. Uh, they'll have the 12th man there, the Wonderwall there to help them out. But I don't think they will replicate the performance that they had against Seattle in terms of defense because the Timbers will have their offensive pieces. They'll be ready to go. So I'm thinking after 90 minutes at Allianz Field, it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Similar to how this episode had double the gameplay, we'll have double the predictions as the Loons do take on LAFC at Bank of California Stadium this Wednesday. And I don't think it's going to be like Portland Timbers. I think it's going to be a little worse considering that it's a short turnaround and they have to travel to the West Coast. They usually don't fare well in LA. I mean, apart from that 2-0 victory that they had, but there were a lot of things going against LAFC that game, and Adrian Heath did have a bit of a technical masterclass. But I don't see that happening this time, especially without Boxel. Probably, I don't know, without Metinair too. I think this team might have to have a bunch of uh, you know, switching around, a lot of rotation due to the amount of games in a short period of time. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be 2-0 LAFC get some goals from the LAFC forwards but I think the defense other than that will kind of keep it close to the vest so anyway this is how the episode will end I hope you enjoyed watching as much as you did playing it be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you for episode 12 this has been Bear Hams and as always toodaloo